everybody out there on YouTube. We are the Middle Aged Guys, and we're going to continue our, our episodic reviews of Young Justice. Uh, hopefully, uh, this particular one will pass without too many faux pas. Uh, I apologize beforehand for uh, the tone of my voice and the fact that I'm all stuffed up. But in this particular video, we're going to cover Season 1, Episode 21, which is entitled Image. Let's get all the introductions out of the way. I'm the Reverend. The theme here. And I'm Grey Mouse 1. Okay. Season 1, Episode 21, Image, originally aired out in March 17, 2012. Uh, like we've said before in many of the other intros, there are no spoiler warnings in our particular review videos. These episodes are close to six years old as it is right now. And whenever we go over these particular reviews, we're going to talk about three particular points. First thing, what we liked about the episode. Secondly, what we didn't like about the episode. Or if there's any details we would like to change, we go ahead and we address that. And then thirdly, we go out of our way to mention any reference points or setup points that we see in this particular episode that we know is working towards something that's coming in the future, whether or not it's a future storyline or episode, uh, you know, coming down the pipe. All right. Um, Without all aside, let me go ahead and jump into the synopsis of this particular episode really quick. Uh, this episode opens up rather shockingly, showing a security recording of um, young Superboy and Black Canary in a sparring match. And after it looks like, you know, Black Canary uh, succeeds in putting uh, young Connor Kent on his ass, uh, she decides to go ahead and reward him. Uh, at this time, uh, Green Arrow and Black Canary are watching this, and their their reactions are rather shocked. Okay, uh, Black Canary denies anything happening right out. She asks for the the video to stop. She's like, "Wait a minute, what the hell is going on here? I have no idea." And then Batman calmly says, "You have to watch the rest of this." He plays the rest of the video, and it turns out that it is Miss Martian uh, shape shifted into the form of Black Canary uh, playing. Uh, a well-known child's game, uh, you know, with uh, with uh, Superboy as, a, you know, Martian Manhunter goes ahead and ex explains it and says that, you know, even though everybody is a, a shapeshifter on Mars, they're also telepaths, so they can tell who's in front of them just by looking into their mind. Um, knowing that such such games actually carry some sort of other, you know, social consequences otherwise, um Black Canary is pretty much beside herself. Uh, Green Arrow, not so much so, but after a while, after she calms herself, she has a conversation with Black Canary to go uh, with, Ms. excuse Martian. me, Miss Martian, to go ahead and straighten things out, and she tells her just to be herself, all right? Which is pretty much a recurring theme throughout this whole episode, all right? Shortly afterwards, Batman gathers up the team, which consists of right now Miss Martian, Superboy, Robin and Kid Flash. Okay, only those particular four, um, and he sends them off on a stealth mission to the um, country of Croc uh, to go ahead and find out why the president uh, Ruman Harjavti has, for some reason, out of the blue, declared that uh, his country of Croc used to be a whole country with the neighboring country of Bialy, which is ruled by Queen Bee. Um, and he said that, you know, that in an unprecedented ceremony, very shortly, they're going to unite the countries. And then he's going to hand over the country to Queen Bee in order for her to go ahead and ruin, reign over everything as the modern monarch. OK, um, they leave off to the off to the mission on arrival to Croc. They notice that um, a local excuse me, animal uh, re refuge. Uh, that's actually owned by Mar Mary Logan, which that will become very, um, uh, what's that, relevant in just a second, is being overrun by uh, Bialyan soldiers who are breaking, you know, they're not, um, uh, what's that, respecting the border lines there. And uh, during the time, the with the Bialyan soldiers uh, breaking through into the refuge, the animal refuge, it causes a stampede, which has uh, a young uh, Garth Logan, and Mary Logan uh, in uh, in the, the path of a stampede of, you know, basically a, a elk and, and other things. They go ahead, they save the save the uh, the owners of the animal refuge. Um, <clears throat> it turns out that the 
owners, you know, like I said, there's Garth Logan and Mary Logan. Mary Logan is actually a former teen pop star, teen, teen TV star, a uh, star of a, of a long gone series called Hello, Megan, which turns out to be the actual, you know, um, basis for uh, Megan Morris's or uh, Miss Martian's human uh, identity. Um, Mary Logan isn't very happy that the fact that they went ahead and they intervened. She said that usually they go ahead and they, they trample over and they break some fences and then they leave. Nothing happens after that. She said that, you know, them intervening has probably actually made it worse for them that they're probably a target now of the Bialian soldiers. Turns out that that's true because the Bialian soldiers come back and the, through a drone strike, they actually go ahead and attack the, um, the, uh, the animal refuge. During the attack, Logan Garth, excuse me, Garth Logan, he actually ends up uh, being injured uh, almost fatally. He needs a, um, a blood transfusion, and the only person who's available that thinks that they can help him at the time is Miss Martian for the fact that when she goes through a transformation, it's on a cellular level, and she is able to sit there and transform her blood type to a matching blood type for Garth. Okay? Uh, they, that procedure actually finishes up without incident, that saves Garth's life, and during the time they go out of their way and they finish their uh, mission over there in Karak. Turns out that the uh, President Herodavti is actually being influenced by Simon. Uh, Queen Bee is not there uh, at his side, but she, her powers actually would have allowed her to go ahead and control him outright. Um, but Simon is there, so the team um, has a run-in with Simon and also the, the Bialian soldiers. The Bialin soldiers are all armed with uh, apocalyptic uh, technology and weapons. And it turns out it looks like they were going to set it up in a way where the president was going to be assassinated and then they were going to go ahead and blame the assassination on the American heroes that are there on the on Karaki soil. Um, they foil that plan uh, during, the, during which Simon and Miss Martian get into a psychic battle. Uh, during that psychic battle, um, Simon, you know, causes Miss Martian to reveal her actual physical form, which is that of a white Martian, which we predicted, you know, uh, in, in a previous video. And before the rest of the team is actually able to come and see her form, Miss Martian brain blasts him, knocks them all unconscious. All right. And during the, the continued fight with Simon, you know, as Simon continually pressures her and corners her into a wall, um, Miss Martian decides to go ahead and let loose basically the psychic dogs of war. She doesn't hold back at all. And um, Simon ends up being her first psychic lobotomy uh, pretty much. And she basically blows him out of the water, leaves him in a, in a drooling lobotomized state. All right. Uh, the team gathers up back at the, uh, the Logan animal refuge. Uh, they go ahead and they go over all, all of the, the happenings and all of that. One of which is when uh, the team actually confront Miss Martian with, "Hey, look, we found uh, we found out that, um, you know, your whole identity, your whole spiel, who you are, is based off of this, uh, off of this, um, this old TV series from from like the seventies. Do you care to explain, you know, who you really are to everybody?" And we wish she does, thinly. All right, not 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 completely. Um, and she explains that, yes, this is the reason why I chose, you know, uh, Megan Morse as a, uh, as an identity, um, you know, due to the fact that I had nothing to watch while I was over there in Mars, my uncle sent back transmissions from earth. This is what I, what I chose to go ahead and build my human identity, uh, as part of. And, um, after they have a little bit of a, a, a table setting moment and everything else, uh, you know. Miss Martian goes to uh, to check up on, on Garth, only to find out that over there in Garth's room is Queen Bee, who lays it out all out in front of her. Oh yes, by the way, bitch, I know who you are. I know what you look like. As long as you do what I ask you to do, I'm not going to reveal your secret to everybody else in the team and everybody that you hold dear. And that's pretty much where the episode leaves off. Um. A little bit more verbose and a little bit more detailed than the synopsis than what I initially planned, but I think that's actually kind of required for the type of things that we're going to cover now. All right. 
Um, out of this, out of the things that we saw in this particular episode, guys, uh, let's go ahead and touch on the first talking point. What was some of the things that you liked about the episode? The floor is open. The very beginning of the episode was comedy at first. When Black Canary and Ollie, Green Arrow, walk in and they see that footage, their reaction was gold, especially Ollie's. Because, especially Green Arrow's, because it's a simple fact of the matter that how, what would you have done if you would have saw that at, that at the heat of the moment? He instantly got pissed. He wanted to question her. And then when, a, when the true footage was revealed, well, not true footage, but when the true self were, was revealed as Miss Martian, I'll, you know, sense of relief kicked in and he bursted out laughing. Dinah! Freeze playback. That never happened. You need to keep watching. Play. <laughs> Freeze playback. <laughs> Don't you laugh! She and he and uh, Oliver, this is not funny. No, <clears throat> no, of course not. When that happened, when I first saw that, I burst out laughing too. Because, I mean, he even wiped a tear from his eye because he was just like a sigh of relief. That was one of the things that I like. There are many other things I like about this episode, but I wanted to touch on that because that was hilarious. Grey Mouse, what about you? Um, well, I actually liked all the foreshadowing that was in this episode. Mm -hmm. It was full of it. I mean, there, the next, in fact, so much that after I watched this episode, I had to watch the, the rest of the season. It, it's just one of those things. And then also things that's going to happen in the, uh, in season two as well. Yeah, it's a bam, 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 bam with this it, episode. It's a, uh, it's a very foreshadowing, uh, um, episode uh so one thing i like too is that finally that uh robin actually is the leader uh. in this in this uh particular uh mission which foreshadows for the future so it's kind of interesting the thing about that was he pretty much he wanted to reject that yeah. because of, because of what happened previously yeah just uh, just a few episodes ago he's still He's still carrying a lot of um, a, a lot of baggage from the fail safe and disordered episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to that, I mean, um, Aqualat wasn't there. Yeah. Um, uh, was there anything else you wanted to add in, Gray Mouse? Before I jump on this? No. If I if I start, I'll just be a laundry list. <laughs> That's why I have to stop at the beginning. And <clears throat> yeah, there's a whole bunch of things about this episode. I think the the one thing that I liked about this episode most is that there's a there's there's a saying in film and and also TV shows that when you're storytelling, there's two ways of doing it. You could either tell the audience what's going on, or you could show the show. audience what's going on. Right? Yeah. Right. So really, up into those up until this point, if you think about it, um, we've known Miss Martian ever since episode number three, but we really, really don't know about her. All right. And this particular episode, the, the very first half of it, it goes out of its way to show you a lot of things about Miss Martian that just really kind of fall into place. All right. You know, uh, you know, from the way that she chose to appear as a human to um, uh, hints as to why she had it out for Superboy from the very fucking beginning. All right. Um, he is. <laughs> His response to seeing, you know, uh, who Connor was in, in the TV show was was golden. Also, that was gold. All right, and also, um, and also, you know, it, like I said, it it really shows like not only uh, how she how she chose to go ahead and 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 appear, but oh. also the type of persona and how, what the type of image that she's mm -hmm. continuing to portray uh, onward with everybody else. Uh, like I said. We've known Miss Martian ever since episode number three. That's when she was introduced. But when it came to backstory, there has been no dedicated episode to her backstory right. at all or to her particular character. Mm -hmm. And now we find out that, well, majority of her fucking character is pretty much copy-paste from a fucking TV show. <laughs> all right. Which, if you think about it, still kind of leaves everybody at the end going, all right, so who is this chick really? All right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's probably my favorite thing about this this particular um, 
this particular episode. They really took the time to go ahead and actually show the information instead of just telling people. Uh, one of the other cool things that I, that I really liked about it um, because of that whole process was that there was a shitload of one-liners that, that we'll go over. Um, well, actually, that I don't want to go over because it, it'll end up being like a just laundry listing stuff. Mm-mm, yeah. But the um, the amount of care that they took with the actual um, the actual uh, intro to the pilot episode is actually pretty impressive and it's golden. Uh, like the fact that um, you know, and right at the end of the of the intro credits, it's just there. It says created by uh, what is it, uh, Greg Vietti and uh, Brandon Wiseman. That's actually a play on the name of uh, Greg Wiseman and Brandon Vietti, which are the showrunners and the creators of the series of Young Justice as a whole. When they um, had the Hello Megan going on, yeah, when they had the, the the credits for Hello Megan and everything going on, so it's 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 great. There's a lot of stuff that's really packed into this. I, I think you know, especially for an episode that's you know concentrated solely just on Miss Martian, this one's great. All right, I, I really like it. I want to um, add. I want to add this at the end of this one. Go ahead. Um, pretty much all the Young Justice <clears throat> now we've been we had their backstories, uh, except for one, and that's coming up in a future episode. Yeah. Well, that's gonna... one is the one that we don't necessarily even need. Well, yeah, but it's still a. It's still a almost as dedicated to his. But his... that it, it, that episode is fantastic. But I, I didn't want to bring it off topic, but I, I did want to say that this... I know, but... So there, so this is like one of the last origin <laughs> stories that they gave us in the season one. And the way they've done it is just brilliant. The, yeah. I mean, this episode starts the beginning of the end of the first season. And yeah. the way everything is told from this point forward yep. is either going to individual bases or like, okay the discussion of the future for these people yep. in, in a way, in a way. And it's like, now the episodes are, are really getting into depth. And, and you got to pay attention to it because it's going to, a lot of uh, details are going to be very important for the future, the rest of the season and in into the uh, season two. Well, I think that it started at the last episode because yeah, they, yeah. they started actually the, the funny thing is, is that you can, you can make the, um, you can make the the debate that um, the argument that they started sowing the seeds for a lot of this stuff from from episode number one. All right, well, which is of yeah, which which is one of the reasons why you know I when we started going ahead and going through the reviews, especially when we started to sit there and actually mm-hmm. uh, structure them the way that we were talking about as far as the three parts. Why I really made sure that to to that we talked about what we, what they go ahead and set up in reference. You know, with the exception of that one fucking episode called Secrets. Well, that's the only that did did have a little bit of setup in it, but yeah, it's mostly a it's mostly bit. forgettable. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> that's it's very very little. Right there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, but that's not to say that this particular episode, as good as it as it is, and as much as I know that we've liked it so far, is perfect. Uh, that'll bring us to our second point, guys. Was there anything in this particular episode that you didn't like, or were there any details within the episode? that you felt would have been better if they changed it a little bit. Come on, Miss Martian. You still couldn't tell them the truth, the whole truth at the end? Shit. Yeah. Or, or eventually get to it. I mean, I understand to a certain point, but I was still like, come on. I mean, her, bl- her brain blasting the rest of them was kind of funny because I'm like, whoa, she took them out like that? Yep. Um, I mean, okay. Kit Flash and Robin, I can understand, but even Superboy? Like, well, that goes back to that failsafe episode where uh, uh, Manhunter said that she has well, abilities more that. powerful than I am, than, than I, mine. I hear that. So, But that's not my initial gripe. My initial gripe is, god damn, you still couldn't reveal it at the end? Yeah. I mean, even Simon was surprised at how quick she acted. <laughs> it's so. so turned the corner, she took them out, like, no, these motherfuckers ain't knowing. It's just, yep. I mean, yes, her greatest fears were shown if she would have told everybody or whatever. And I'm not sure why Martian Manhunter was in the, any of those clips of, you know, he should already fucking know. But again, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. 
that was the only thing. I'm like, but okay, she showed a lot of emotion. Winnie Cooper didn't show this much emotion in the Wonder <laughs> Years, but she does it here. Okay, that's fine. Hey, leave her alone. Fuck that <laughs> show, okay? <laughs> well, uh, no, the thing is, is um, Simon put her back against the wall. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that Martian Manhunter, the reason why he was there, was just to put that, that final nail in the coffin, the peripheral coffin there, you know what I mean? Like, well, the final nail was Super Bowl. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that, that was pretty much it. But there were, you know, like even, even <laughs> her uh, – what is it? Her uncle? Yeah. Was uh, well, not, you know, like it's time for you to go back. Yeah. Well, without, without having to sit there and jump into that justification further, what, what did you not like about the, the particular episode? Um, Grey Mouse? See, I hated the hello Megan shit. I, I, I hated it, hated it, hated it, hated it, hated it, hated it, hated it. It was, it was so, 90s or 80s cliche sitcom bullshit. It, it, it was like, it was like, the wonder years. All the sitcoms that, 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 that she had from Earth, she had to imitate that one. Hello, <laughs> Megan. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, come on. <laughs> but I know it fits. I, I know it fits in the storyline, but that really, <laughs> really aggravated me. Again. Yeah. It was like the Wonder Years. Hint, hint. <laughs> well, Grey Mouse has said, for, you know, from a few videos back that he's he's always hated the Hello Megan catchphrase whenever she does it. So it's, yeah, it it, it, it fits into the motif. I, I understand where he's coming from. But this is the episode that explained it, but I'm not knocking at Grey Mouse. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. It was just okay. hilarious the way you were putting everything. <laughs> I think with this with this particular one, other than the standard teenage angst and antics of a lot of the folks, all right? Like, the, whole, the, the one thing about, like, uh, you know, Miss Marsha not going ahead and telling the, 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 um, the truth at the end, you know, which, does, which does, you know, uh, nod at me also, is that it, it gave us one of the best one-liners in the whole fucking episode. Bald Miss Martian. Bald Megan. Still hot. Still hot. <laughs> yep. Bald from from Kid Flash. Kid Flash. Uh, yeah. Bald Megan. Still hot. All right. One of the best fucking lines, uh, you know, uh, in, in the episode. But the one thing. That, I was just surprised that Superboy didn't jump into that immediately. But. Well, yeah. what was cool was the fact that how quick she thought on her, on her feet. Because obviously if her, if her uncle is bald. Well, it's it's just one of those things where it's kind of it kind of throws into that. I think it it she she thought well enough that hey, since this is similar to my uncle, that that will go ahead. Exactly. But that's not that's not what bugs me. Okay, what bugs me is this. All right, so you have you have um, you have Miss Martian, Kid Flash, um, Robin, and Superboy. There, how the hell did Queen Bee uh, sneak into Garth's room? Exactly. All right. I didn't not, not only that, there was no way that Superboy didn't hear any of that. Yeah, or, or out of all of the all of those fucking characters there, that she snuck past all of them. Okay, that's all number one. And all right, got into the room. Yeah. yeah, not not only that. Okay, but you know, knowing that you even then, okay, even even then, going up against Queen Bee from the very beginning, uh, where the hell was Artemis or Zatanna? Exactly. They they, ex because they explained Aqualad away. But yeah. they didn't explain that, them away, all right? So, I mean, because the thing is, is that, you know, later on, when, when, when Queen Bee is mentioned, guess what? They have the all-chick the all team, all right? The, you know, going after her and, and running the mission in, in, in Bialya, you know? And maybe you can sit there and say that it's a, it's a learning point from this particular mission, all right? Um, but, yeah, it just doesn't make sense, especially when you consider, all right, you have the best – hero strategist and Mr. Prep time Batman actually running the fucking uh, mission. He's going to sit there and he's going to send uh, three dudes and Miss and, and, and Miss, Miss Martian for, to go ahead and run the, run the whole mission. And that's it. But you know? it, it's funny how even in the beginning of the episode, you saw a little bit of Bruce Wayne there and Kid yeah. Flash kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is another thing that kind of bugged me, but that's Wally being Wally. All right. And, and again, that's not even a kid flash thing. That's Wally being Wally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, 
So could you put this towards the easy, nice package wrap up? Or it was put there as a point to where to continue the next episode? Because, I no, mean, actually, this, this is a start of this, the, this, this one. This one's a lot better. Uh, that's actually going to bring us to our third point, you know, for the last 10 minutes that we got here. Um, what did you see show up in the episode that acts as a setup or reference for a future episode? And there's actually a lot. Um, you know, the one most important thing to me that I noticed, the blood transfusion. Now, with that being said, as soon as you looked at Garfield Logan after that, he had green eyes. Yeah. Yep. So yep. that, and if you know who Garfield Logan actually is, <clears throat> that covers all of that. We're, I'm yep. like, okay, we're done. We're done here. All right. When is it happening? And yep. that's all I'm really going to say about that. <laughs> Go ahead, Great Mouse. What about you, sir? Yeah, I have to agree. I was going to mention that, actually, because in when they first meet Garfield Logan, his eyes were blue or kind of a teal. And then after yeah. the blood transfusion made him green, which – anyway. Um, another one is, uh, I think, would be um, the uh, – putting Robin as a leader – Yep. Well, yeah, I, I mean, the, the thing with Robin as a leader is that it's, it's, he still holds a lot of reservations being over from, like, the, um, the fail safe and disordered episodes, mm -hmm. and it showed, like, throughout the whole episode, all right? Because it, like, it was like, wait, me, leader? And he, it was like, Batman's like, you're the, you're the most obvious choice. Aqualad's not here. Yeah. And um, that, the thing about it is that, you know, I, I, I like the fact that that does definitely set up majority of second season and everything else. Um, one of the things that we, we were kind of remiss to go ahead and, and mention, which was another obvious one, was that um, Queen Bee blackmailing Miss Martian. All right. Yes. That, that was the obvious one. Yeah, that, that, that's a really obvious one. That pays dividends all the way up until the end of the first, first uh, season. And then the other one that, that I think is also really obvious – which, you know, comes back for a lot of return performances is uh, Miss Martian going out of her way and just blasting people to the point where they become drooling lobotomers, all right, where they're pretty much nothing is left there. Well, they're, they're broken to the point where it's like, yeah, this one is not coming back anytime soon, you know. Um, that becomes yeah. a cornerstone in a freaking second season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, 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 it almost becomes her signature move. So literally, all right. Um, yeah. So, is was there anything else that we wanted to go and throw on there? But I think we we covered pretty much all of all the concrete ones, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Because I mean, from that point, we could just start nitpicking as far as it being like in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like I said, there's a lot of things to like about this one. But you know what? Let's go ahead and wrap it up like we normally do. All right. On a scale of yay, nay, or meh, what are your final thoughts on this particular episode? I give this a yay. Um, not only did Robin, you know, he was a leader, but he rejected it, but he accepted it. Miss Martian, backstory. You know, Superboy and Kid Flash, yeah, they were just there, but they held certain important parts as well. And then Garfield Logan. Queen Bee at the end. Yeah, I give this a yay. Mm. Gray Mouse. I have to say the same thing. I agree. Uh, I'll give this episode a yay um, with all that was said before. And, you know, it's a, it a good, this is a, this is when the story really starts picking up and moving towards the end of the season. So it's definitely a yay for me. Yeah, I'm going to give this one an enthusiastic yay. Um, there's something that, there's something about this particular episode, and I found myself being very, very surprised. Uh, rewatching it just recently to go ahead and do my notes and all of this is that, um, you know, if we were at the beginning of this particular, of this particular set of uh, videos that we were done, as far as reviews and stuff like that, if you'd ask me, okay, so what, what's your favorite episode of uh, of Young Justice? I mean, there's there's quite a few of them that that would have you know stood out, like um, you know the fail safe episode, uh, what is it, uh, agendas, oh, uh, maybe a few others, right? But, you know, 
in the large scheme of things, this particular episode image would not have been one of them. All right. But I got to say, as far as where this falls within the full series, um, you know, the, the season as it is right now, this is one of the tightest and best crafted episodes that's put together. Like I said, when you, when you have storytelling, you could either tell or you could show. All right. We already know Miss Martian. We've been introduced to her, you know, ever since the, the from from basically episode number three all the way forward. She was uh, introduced to the epi- end of episode number two. Episode. Um, but yeah, so when it comes to a lot of this, it's like, well, we really don't know her. And then all of a sudden, they go ahead and they spend five minutes on some shitty parody of a, a, a of like a mid a late eighties, you know, uh, early nineties uh, uh, sitcom. And that told everybody so much about Miss Martian as a fucking character that it's like, oh, wow, yeah, you know? <laughs> and not only that, but the way that she reacted to, you know, how things happened uh, with Simon and, you know, if if any of that, you know, that, that built-up image, you know, the danger of that built-up image, like, disappearing or, or, or being torn down in front of other people, you know, it, it speaks volumes, uh, you know, a lot more than what they put on on screen, which is great. Add on to that, that they still took time to go ahead and set things up. You know, uh, granted there's like five more episodes in this particular season, but they've, they've laid cornerstones for things even beyond season one in this particular uh, episode. There's a lot that they did and that they accomplished in just 22 and a half <laughs> minutes. It's really, really impressive and really, really tight. And with that, again, an enthusiastic yay for me. All right. Um, but that is our thoughts on this particular episode. Like we always say at the end of this particular episode, or any of these reviews that we do, folks, what did you think about Young Justice Season 1, Episode 21, Images? Uh, you could go ahead and tell us what you think about this particular episode in the comments below. And, you know, comment on our, on our review, any of our thoughts. If there's anything we happen to miss, I don't think we did in this particular video, but there might have been, all right? You can leave us uh, your comments below. While you're at it, if you like this particular uh, video that we've done here, we'd like you to go ahead and mash on that like button. Uh, feel free to hit, uh, to, to hit the unlike if you f- honestly feel that way. And uh, if you really like what we're doing here with our reviews or any of the other talk that we have as far as any of the geek stuff, whether it be movies, video games, or likewise, we encourage that you go ahead and hit subscribe and turn on those notifications so you'll know whenever we put out another video. And I promise I should probably sound a lot better next time we do. All right. Um, with that, thank you very much for watching this particular video, folks. We are the Middle Age Guys. And this particular review has been on Young Justice episode, excuse me, season one, episode number 21, uh, which was entitled Images. I am the Reverend. The theme here. <laughs> I'm Gray Mouse One. All forms of entertainment has the right to exist, even if you don't like it. Credits. <laughs>